more quotes to back it up. Um, okay, let me read this. This is a great one, too. The New World Order must meet the immediate need and not be an attempt to satisfy some distant idealistic vision. The New World Order must be appropriate to a world which has passed through a destructive crisis and to a humanity which is badly shattered by the experience. The New World Order must lay the foundation for a future world order which will be possible only after a time of recovery, of reconstruction, and of rebuilding. That's huge. That's talking about the you know building up the New World Order, the Phoenix rising from the ashes. So once they, they bring down society... You know, who knows if that'll be through, you know, e the economy, through wars, or maybe most likely a combination. But this is talking about setting it up, you know, from a shattered society. And they, they talk about that. In the externalization of the hierarchy, they say that the New World Order is going to have to come about from just, yeah, a collapse. I mean, uh, let me see if I can find the actual, the actual writings of it. It is just absolutely stunning, though, because they say... You know, this is all going to have to come about from... Oh, yeah, here it is. The world crisis is a chapter in it. So, yeah, the world crisis... They talk about how, um, basically, these, these they believe in these ascended masters, and they say these ascended masters always come down at a time when humanity needs them the most. And they believe... Uh, there's a number of ascended masters. They believe, you know, Jesus was one of them, the Krishna, uh, Buddha. They They believe these are all world teachers that always come down at a critical time, and they believe... Um, that we're exiting the age of Pisces right now and entering into the age of Aquarius. And the age of Aquarius will be brought on uh, by this new world teacher. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a part of externalization of the hierarchy called uh, the world crisis. So with that being said, let me read a few more uh, quotes from her because these are all very impressive. Uh, okay. Uh, the New World Order must be appropriate to a world which has passed through a destructive crisis. That just goes back into what, uh, what I was saying about the, you know, the huge the collapse and then setting up the New World Order. And New World Order is, or is uh, her term. Don't just think it's me calling it that. That's, uh, that's what she called it. And that's what the Global New World or Order elite call it, too. And, okay, um, we are concerned with only one subject, the ushering in of the New World Order. Wow. Okay. And then the last one I have here is the present world order, which is today largely disorder, can be so modified and changed that a new world and a new race of men can gradually come into being. Renunciation and the use of the sacrificial will should be the keynote for the interim period after the war, World War II, uh, prior to the inauguration of the New Age. So, uh, yeah, she's talking about bringing in this new world order through a basic uh, collapse. And some of you, you know, might be saying, uh, so uh, this is just some occultist, you know, back in, you know, decades ago. Why should I care what she's saying? Well, the fact of the matter is uh, they, you know, the, the Theosophical Society set up Lucius Trust, which was initially called Lucifer Publishing. And Lu Lucius Trust still exists today and is uh, listed as an NGO from the UN. It is associated with the UN, and I, it's associated, the UN has a meditation room, um, and it has some association with that. I'm still looking into that. That's a, I mean, the whole UN and the meditation room could be a topic of a whole other show, but the uh, Lucius Trust um, is still around and does definitely have some influence. And uh, actually, a lot of these um, New World Order elites um, do talk about you know wanting a one world religion, and they do have a spiritual side to them too. I know a lot of them try to you know they seem like hardcore materialistic atheists, and and you know they're just totally about uh, you know what they see in their five senses. They they claim not to believe in God, but we all know even though they might say that or they might claim to be some mainline Christians, we know actions speak louder than words, and a lot of what these New World Order elites actually do says a lot uh, for what they believe. And, you know, this goes back to things like, you know, Bohemian Grove and uh, Skull and Bones, which a lot of them came from, where they do these bizarre occult practices. And so just because they say, you know, they might say, oh, they're an atheist or they're a Christian or, you know, whatever, main, you know, they just want to seem mainstream. But we know in practice a lot of them uh, definitely are into some 
pretty uh, unique, unique uh, religion. So, yeah, there's a Theosophical Society. Oh, and one thing, so these, uh, the Theosophical Society, they always talk about these ascended masters that they uh, communicate with. And, I mean, they mean that literally. They they don't just mean, uh, you know, they pray and then they, they, I mean, they actually say they're channeling them and communicating with them and then they actually have seen them, they claim, you know, to see them. I know Alice Bailey says she uh, initially, I can't, is another uh, hard to pronounce name, I can't remember the name of the actual entity, but she was actually um, approached by one of these entities when she was reading as a child. And the child, and the entity basically told her, you'll have a great future ahead of you if you, you know, do this and that. And, and you know, a lot of these uh, people in these occult, uh, you know, secret society types, they always are claiming to be speaking with entities. And, I mean, you know, I've studied a lot of things about extraterrestrials and abduction, and I take them at face value. I, I do. I I don't think they're lying about that. I mean, it doesn't mean everything the entities, what the entities are telling them is truth. But I I do actually believe they are being, uh, you know, uh, they they are communicating with, they are channeling, and they are actually dealing with um, entities. And if you think that sounds strange or you know wacky, well. All of these cultures have talked about, you know, things like demons and and all sorts of, you know, strange entities, and it's and it's so connected. So these have been reported throughout history. You know, sure, you know, it, it might sound strange, but this is what people are claiming they see, and then it's the similarities are just startling from places that are on, you know, opposite sides of the world. So if they're all making it up, why would they be so similar? But regardless, my point is, so they claim to be talking to these entities. And, let's, and for now, I'm just going to believe them and say, sure, okay, they are. One thing, that, one interesting connection I've noticed between, uh, like, the Theosophical Society and then also these uh, UFO religions are kind of tied into this as well. Um, so I have been uh, looking into a, a group called the Ashtar Command. And um, Ashtar Command uh was started by a, a guy who, who was claiming to channel an extraterrestrial named Ash, Ashtar and um it, it is very interesting the things that these so-called extraterrestrials are teaching them are very very similar to things that you know these groups like like the Theosophical Society teach so it could be either the, the same or similar entities um there's a book out there this is a pretty unknown book but it's called guess what the title is New World Order uh, prophecies from space channeled by the Ashtar Command, and it, what it is is this person is. Uh, let me just read the little summary here. Uh, okay, it says product description. Visitors from high realms reveal the true nature of the cosmos. Several years ago, a New York City businessman began to receive messages from a being from outer space. The voice identified itself as Ashtar, commander of a huge spaceship orbiting Earth. In a series of telepathic messages, the hi this highly advanced being made many astounding predictions regarding future events that we that will take place on Earth. Many of the prophecies have since come true, while others are slated to transpire in the new age that is rapidly descending upon the planet. Thrilling news about the world of tomorrow. And then this book talks about uh, the folly of our political systems. You know, th they always say... Uh, you know, they say they're against our political system, which I'm, a lot of us are now, but their solution is a one-world united, uh, you know, one-world government, one-world religion. So it talks about the folly of the, our political systems, the top-secret mission of the Space Brothers. So uh, Space Brothers, Ascended Masters, um, I think ultimately they're all, you know, linked at the hip. Um, let's see, spiritual development of humankind. That's what all these ascended masters talk about. That we we have to go into this age of Aquarius to be at a new, you know, spiritual phase and, you know, spiritual evolution. Uh, the inside of our pl of our planet is really inhabited. So these beings claim that there's a hollow Earth, which uh, we've spoken about the hollow Earth theory on on antimatter radio. I know Jeffrey Grubbs uh, hit on that subject a lot, and th yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting that that these entities have claimed that because. There is a lot of, of information behind that topic. Um, physical changes to be undergone by the planet in the next decade. Uh, meditation key to lifting our vibrations. All these things that uh, Ashtar Command, this uh, UFO religious group, is claiming uh, that they're being taught 
is very much uh, similar to these, the Theosophical Society and these uh, religions that started the, you know, quote, New Age movement. Um, okay, let's see, there's also talks about teleportion to the, to the commonplace. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, true meaning of the beast, whose number is 666. Earth is a living entity. Life in other dimensions. The coming of open relations between Earth and other planets. And, uh, yeah, so it's just, it's really interesting to me that a lot of the messages that um, the Theosophical Society was claiming to get from these beings are very similar to some of these, uh, you know, UFO religions. And also, I've, like I said, I've researched um, firsthand accounts of these uh, people who claim to be abducted. And they're also, you know, the message is always very similar. Um to a point of where you know it's just it seems it would be very unlikely if uh, if all these people are just making it up because you would think the message would be very varied and and a lot of a lot of these people who claim to be abducted by aliens are saying that the Earth is coming to a, a you know basically a point of complete destruction and that we're gonna have to have a uni you know things like a spiritual universal brotherhood is the only solution and um so yeah they uh. And then it's just so funny how this all ties in together. So I recently did a show about some of this news about the extraterrestrial, uh, you know, uh, news. The fact that the UN set up an ambassador to meet with um, any alien visitors that come here. They called uh, the person a "take me to your leader" a woman. Um, the UN has done that. Uh, you had this disclosure with the people in the Air Force talking about these um, UFOs tampering with. Uh, nuclear mis uh, missiles and it's just funny that they're saying that because it's it's almost like they're trying they're starting to paint these uh ufos and extraterrestrials in a more positive light i mean hey look they're disabling our our nuclear weapons how is that a bad thing you know they're hmm maybe are they here to uh save us so it's like they're trying to implant that idea into our consciousness that these uh you know ets and aliens are actually are not it's not only negative, but they actually may be here to uh, save us. And and that message is in all sorts of science fiction movies, and you know. And then, oh, someone actually sent me some clips of it. Actually, Toy Story three, uh, it shows the main characters. They're about to meet their end. They're about to basically perish, but then they get saved by these extraterrestrials. Another movie, knowing. Sorry if I'm ruining the end. I guess spoiler alert. But uh, I don't. I, I rarely watch movies. But anyways. The movie Knowing it shows a scene at the end. These mainstream movies are showing, you know, a lot of similarities with these extraterrestrials coming, uh, you know, right when humanity is about to perish, and they come and save them. That's what happens in Knowing. These extraterrestrials save the uh, human race, and that it goes in line with uh, these whole ascended masters coming at a key time. And um, yeah, so let me see. Yeah, this Ashtar command. Um, if you search Ashtar Command, if you go to Google, and it's just so, it is just absolutely amazing to me that, um, you know, these people that are t claiming to be communicating with extraterrestrials are saying the exact same thing that uh, these the Theosophical Society was teaching. And, and the, the thing about the Theosophical Society is, uh, this is around... Um, long before the whole UFO craze started, you know. That kind of started after World War II. And, and um, you know, one thing I've noticed with these entities, either whether you call them aliens or demons or, you know, whatever they may be, but I, I'll just refer to them as entities because we're still, I'm still just trying to figure out what they are. But it does seem almost like they uh, can change their appearance to be more relevant with the person's paradigm. So, Back then, uh, these entities came to the Theosophical Societies. A lot of times they would be described as uh, people with turbans, you know, kind of like gurus, like you would think of like a wise, uh, you know, Buddhist uh, or whatever religion, you know, monk, like a, someone, who, like a priest class person. So they'd appear to the Theosophical Society like that. But then it's like, uh, you know, our paradigm after World War II and we started developing this technology, uh, you know, people being abducted would claim to see little green men from Mars, you know, so it's like they would uh, appear, you know, to people in whatever form uh, that, that that person's mind would instantly recognize, and then if you if you can look at that theory, you can look at all the past um, phenomenon of people reporting, you know, seeing 
things like uh that's huge that's talking about the you know building up the new world order the phoenix rising from the ashes so once they they bring down society you know who knows if that'll be through you know e the economy through wars or maybe most likely a combination but this is talking about setting it up you know from a shattered society and they they talk about that in the externalization of the hierarchy they say that the new world order is going to have to come about from just yeah a collapse I mean, uh, let me see if I can find the actual actual writings of it. It is just absolutely stunning, though, because they say, you know, this is all going to have to come about from... Oh, yeah, here it is. The World Crisis is a chapter in it. So, yeah, the World Crisis, they talk about how um, basically these, these they believe in these ascended masters, and they say these ascended masters always come down at a time when humanity needs them the most. And they believe... Uh, there's a number of ascended masters. They believe, you know, Jesus was one of them, the Krishna, uh, Buddha. They they believe these are all world teachers that always come down at a, more quotes to back it up. Um, okay, let me read this. This is a great one, too. The new world order must meet the immediate need and not be an attempt to satisfy some distant idealistic vision. The new world order must be appropriate to a world which has passed through a destructive crisis and to a humanity which is badly shattered by the experience. The new world order must lay the foundation for a future world order, which will be possible only after a time of recovery, of reconstruction, and of rebuilding, which has passed through a destructive crisis. That just goes back into what, uh, what I was saying about the you know the huge the collapse and then setting up the new world order. And New World Order is or is uh, her term. Don't just think it's me calling it that. That's uh, that's what she called it, and that's what the Global New World or Order elite call it too. And okay, um, we are concerned with only one subject: the ushering in of the New World Order. Wow. Okay, and then the last one I, I have here is the present world order critical time, and they believe um, that we're exiting the age of Pisces right now and entering into the age of Aquarius. And the age of Aquarius will be brought on uh, by this new world teacher. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a part of externalization of the hierarchy called uh, the world crisis. So with that being said, let me read a few more uh, quotes from her because these are all very impressive. Okay. Uh, the New World Order must be appropriate to a world